Roberts here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Here in New York, a settlement will pay hundreds of millions of dollars to more than 10,000 rescue workers who were exposed to toxic debris after 9-11. Friday's agreement comes after a seven-year battle between New York City and first responders who said they were not properly outfitted for rescue and cleanup efforts after the World Trade Center attacks. More than 95 percent of the workers who sued the city have accepted the terms of the settlement and will receive at least $625 million in compensation. Payments will range from a few thousand dollars to well over a million dollars, depending on the severity of the injuries. In a joint statement issued soon after the settlement was accepted, New York lawmakers Gerald Nadler, Peter King and Carolyn Maloney said, quote, nearly everyone agrees that the settlement does not provide adequate funding to fully compensate those who are injured. Those who signed on to Friday's settlement would still be eligible for the James DeDroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act. If it passes, it'll provide $7.4 billion in aid and medical coverage for 9-11 workers and survivors who were exposed to toxic substances after the 9-11 attacks. For more on Friday's settlement and the Zadroga bill that has not yet passed the Senate, I'm joined by author and journalist Anthony De Palma, currently writer in residence at Seton Hall University. His latest book is City of Dust, Illness, Arrogance and 9-11. He was a reporter and foreign correspondent for The New York Times for 22 years. Welcome to Democracy Good morning. Now. Thank it's you. It's good to have you with us. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the significance of this settlement, $625 million. $625 million that will go to uh, upwards of around 10,000 people who were down there. This includes firefighters, policemen and construction workers, a whole range of people who spent up to nine months down at Ground Zero cleaning up. The basic issue was whether or not they were properly warned of the danger and then given the equipment that they needed to protect themselves. Importantly, you have to understand that this was not a class action suit. Uh, because each of the exposures was different and each of the effects was different. So what they did was the judge required them to bring together each of these suits individually and put them into what's called a joint action. So you've got 10,000 individual cases, really significant, because each one of them would have to be tried separately. So the judge in federal court, Judge Alvin K. Hellerstein, knew that he was facing this impossible task of 10,000 individual cases. Imagine one case could take years. So he has pushed them towards a settlement, but it's a settlement without ever actually hearing any of the arguments in court. What that means in the long run is that even though most of the people have signed, 95.1 percent, there are still about 500 individual cases that could potentially go forward into litigation. Who are those who are getting more than a million dollars? The way the, um, the litigation is set up, according to Judge Hellerstein's structure, is there are four tiers of individuals based on the severity of their illnesses. Tier one are thousands of people who are either not sick and fear that they will be sick in the future or have relatively minor respiratory irritants and that kind of thing. And then tier two, more severe, three, more severe, and then tier four is the category of the most severely injured people. And 98 percent of those people have agreed to accept the settlement. So um, we don't know exactly who the individuals are in those cases. We do know that some of the people who have been involved in the litigation from the very beginning, in fact, the two guys who were the very first responders to file suit, have not accepted. And so it's likely that they are going to be going to trial. Describe the symptoms, for example, at stage four. Yeah. Um, we're talking mostly about respiratory problems. So it could be someone with uh, a lung cancer. Uh, it could be someone with a lung scarring disease, like sarcoidosis or fibrosis. It could be someone um, who's, who's lost the ability to work or, in fact, some of the people who've died as a result of these injuries. What they want to do is to be able to link with some degree of medical certainty exposure to the dust and the kinds of illnesses that the people are claiming. So unfortunately, and one reason why there are people who didn't sign on to this, you might ask, well, why wouldn't you? If uh, there's, uh, there was a female detective who uh, testified several times in court, and she has uh, breast cancer that she developed after working down at 9-11. 
So she's she had to go through surgeries. She's lost her ability to work, but she's not in tier four, even though the disease is quite serious, because as of right now, there is not scientific evidence to link that type of cancer with the dust. Deaths. Uh, tricky, tricky. Uh, we know that there are hundreds of people who were down there who've died, but. What we don't know is whether or not they've died as a result of exposure to the illness, to the dust. Uh, the number, the state health department is keeping track of the number of deaths, and they counted as, res, as of last July 836. And then we know that there are others after that. But of what universe? The, the number of people that were down there working from September until July of the following year could be as high as 90,000. So of those, we know that some of them probably died as a result of exposure, and some of them may not uh, have died as a result of exposure. Uh, some of their illnesses may have been exacerbated by exposure. All of those things are not yet resolved. That's why it's important to continue to do the treatment and to continue to have the research. Tell us about Felicia Dunn-Jones. When it comes to deaths, Felicia Dunn-Jones' name stands out. Uh, among all of them. And her case is quite unusual. She was not actually in the towers. She was a civil uh, rights attorney who worked for the U.S. Department of Education in a building uh, a block away. When the towers were struck, she could actually see what happened. Her building was pelted by debris. They didn't let the employees leave after the first plane hit, but after the second one did, they all went out. She lives in Staten Island, so she was down on Church Street as the first building came Not down. Not an emergency worker? Not an emergency worker, no. No, no. She was uh, an employee like thousands and thousands of other people who were simply exposed because she was down there. As she tried to make her way back home to Staten Island, she was covered in dust the first time and then the second time. It took her most of the day to get back. That was in September. By February of the following year, she was severely um, uh, debilitated, was taken to the hospital, and died suddenly. When, because of the circumstances, there was an autopsy done, and um, they found that the cause of death was sarcoidosis, this term that I used before. We know that their firefighters who were exposed to the ground zero dust, they had a spike in the number of cases of sarcoidosis at the very beginning. That was five times higher than the number of cases they had in the previous 15 years. So there's a real and close link. And sarcoidosis is the hoarding of... It, it, it is um, an autoimmune disease where the organs are covered with uh, cysts that sort of harden up. Um, we don't know exactly what causes it, but there is a link to exposure to uh, heavy dust in the past. They've known that. So she had this. Um, she asked, her family asked the medical examiner in New York City to consider whether or not it was linked to the dust. And uh, Dr. Hirsch, the chief medical examiner in New York, eventually did agree that her death was caused by, sar by sarcoidosis, which was caused by exposure to the dust. So her name will be added to the formal list of victims that will be inscribed down at the memorial at 9-11. That's became a very important thing. Others have tried to ask for that, including the family of James Zadroga, and the medical examiner has refused to do it. So let's talk about James Zadroga, for whom the uh, congressional bill mm -hmm. is named. Astonished many that the Senate will not—we are talking about police, firefighters, emergency mm -hmm. workers that it has been so embroiled in politics in the Senate that it has not been passed to help those people who helped at Ground Zero yeah. and got so sick. Yeah. Who is James Zadroga? James Zadroga was a, uh, a veteran detective, New York City, um, arrived at Ground Zero on September 11th and spent somewhere upwards of 400 hours working down there. He very quickly uh, came down with respiratory problems and was unable to work. He uh, applied to the first September 11th Victim Compensation Fund, which most of us know about as a result of their uh, providing help for the families of the people who died. But they also provided help for 2,000 or so people who were injured, like James Sedroga. So he, uh, because his injuries 
developed very quickly before the cutoff date of December 2003, he was eligible to receive compensation, which he did receive compensation for. In January of 2006, he died uh, at his father's home in New Jersey. So a pathologist in New Jersey was uh, given the task of doing an autopsy. He did, and he concluded, and this was the, uh, the language that they used in, in medical terms, this is like the gold standard, with a reasonable degree of medical certainty, his death was directly related to his exposure to the dust. So that was the first case of a responder where we had that scientific evidence. So we thought in the press, as I was covering it for the New York Times before I wrote the book, that this was a sentinel case. This was a case that was going to really change everything. And in fact, it did cause the Bush administration to uh, appoint a national 9-11 health coordinator and got them much more involved than they had been before. The Bush administration's position basically had been from the beginning that the dust wasn't harmful. So that made it difficult for them to ever provide much money for screening if you said at the beginning that it wasn't harmful. Zadroga's case um, then sort of triggered lots of things, but the family tried to do what Felicia Dunn Jones's family did, which was to have Zadroga's name added to the memorial list. So they presented the case to the New York City chief medical examiner. Even though there was an autopsy, it was done outside the city. So the chief medical examiner had to take a look at it so that they could add his name to the list. And um, as it turns out, the chief medical examiner didn't agree with the findings uh, and found that there was uh, another reason for his death. The Zadroga bill still carries his name, and uh, it has been involved in politics. During the Bush administration, it really didn't get anywhere. It was only with the incoming uh, Obama administration and the Democratic Congress in the last year and a half that it's been able to move forward. It passed the House uh, in September, late September. There was an amendment to the bill, because one of the problems was lots of the responders who were supposed to take the settlement in the litigation were waiting to see what would happen with the Zadroga bill. They were afraid if they took the settlement, they would not be able to take the money that comes from the Zadroga bill. The amendment allowed them to do both. And uh, as a result, I think that helped push you over the 95 percent. It passed in September. Now it goes, it's sitting in the Senate. Senator Gillibrand in New York and Senator Schumer are pushing hard. Last week, Mayor Bloomberg, the entire congressional delegation were down in Washington buttonholing Republicans with the hope that they can get one or two who would be willing to vote for it. But there are several problems. Paying for it. Uh, is one. And I think, in a way, the uh, settlement may actually make it a little bit more difficult, because people around the rest of the country will be looking and saying, well, these people have already received the settlement. I